Vitaly Alexievich's report today made a great impression on me. Why? Because he pointed us to nature. After all, we can only implement nature-like technologies, those that nature allows. And we don't really think about this. An example of this is 300 tokamaks. All of them work against nature. We do not want to know how true thermonuclear fusion works on the sun. The Nobel Prize was awarded for indicating the PP cycle, the proton-proton cycle. If anyone remembers, on the left two protons, on the right one neutron, plus a positron, plus neutrino. But the conservation laws are not observed here. Where from? Where did the positron and anti-neutrino come from on the right? No one talks about this, although everyone um, give awards for such things, and so on. The same thing has been happening for 35 years. We have been working on low temperature transmutations, but we still do not want to understand where this exists in nature. And only today's report by Vitaly Alexeyevich clearly points us to where to look for the root of all our problems. We need to search for them in nature. I will allow myself to briefly make two additions to Vitaly, to Vitaly Alexievich's report, if he permits, of course, which he would agree with. First, if I were in Vitaly Alexievich's place, I would also make an addition emphasizing the role of the environment, which was not mentioned at all. All galaxies, stars, planets are formed inside the vortex of the medium. I call it the electromagnetic field, as Faraday did. Others call it ether. Call it whatever you like. What's important is the essence. And this medium was mainly in the form of hydrogen and helium the transformation of Earth. And Vitaly Aleksic clearly explained to us today that in four and a half billion years, not everything has emerged from the core yet, as if all the gas hasn't yet come out. I honestly have my doubts about that. Surely the initial hydrogen at the center of the Earth is no longer there. So what is there? And why are these reactions possible? In the core and in the mantle, unfortunately, we did not see a single mechanism provided. Not a single formula of these reactions was provided. More precisely, on the 12th slide, I asked for them to be included, but it was also unclear where everything came from. Today, I would like to add a little clarification to what Alexander Georgievich said. He believes that neutrinos are generated through collisions. Well, that's not entirely clear to me either. What, where will a particle come from if two particles collide with each other? I've never seen anything like that in my life. Maybe this is it, but there is another way. Behind me is the Earth's core section, if you can all see it. The pressure there is three and a half million atmospheres, and in a solid body, electron gas degeneracy occurs. But every particle is surrounded by a de Broglie wave that is a vortex from the medium of electro, from the medium of gravitons, the electromagnetic medium that exists around us. Well, ether is ether. And at this pressure, the degeneration of de Broglie waves occurs. And what are degenerate de Broglie waves? They become communal, they become free. So this is neutrino. Neutrino is a vortex of ether, a vortex of the medium, the field medium. 
So where do neutrinos come from? They go from the core to the surface of the earth. But on the way, of course, they have low energy because they continuously collide with something and they produce these reactions. Electron neutrinos generate more neutrinos and then follows a chain about which I am not permitted to speak further today. So the source, the entire energy comes from the degeneration of the electron gas in the Earth's core. In the degeneration of de Broglie waves generating neutrino streams. These neutrino streams make it possible to carry out low temperature reactions on the entire path from the center of the earth to the earth's crust to the surface. Is it possible to generate elements heavier than iron? Well, obviously adding adding protons to light elements to helium generates heavier elements up to iron and what next beyond that it is not energetically favorable but what is favorable if we have a lot of neutrons a neutron flux the neutrons due to beta minus decay attaching to elements increase the atomic number that is shift all elements to the right. Therefore, Vitaly Alexievich told us that there is no uranium at the center of the earth, but there is uranium in the crust on the surface. It is completely logical that the charge number increases as you move from the center of the earth to the surface due to the production of heavier elements by neutrino fluxes. And neutrinos are obtained from protons, primary protons. During the reaction with intermediate bosons W minus W plus and the neutral boson Z zero. Therefore, today's report gives the impression that based on it, on what Vitaly Alexievich said. Go further, go right, left, but without losing sight of the very specific prospects, namely the presence of nuclear reactions directly beneath us, directly in nature, in the Earth's core, in the mantle, and even in the crust. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.